first part of this video will be devoted to a Python simulation of the Barkhausen effect. When an external magnetic field is applied to a ferromagnet, the magnetic domains within the ferromagnet will change to align with the external field, as seen here. However, this change is by no means gradual. The spins within such a material will magnetize in a series of jumps or avalanches. This is due to irregularities within the metal. To model this disorder, we will use a random field icing model. This is an image of the magneto domains for a given simulation of disorder 1. Implementing this type of field in our Hamiltonian, we can simulate the magnetization process as we increase the external field, H. A given spin will flip due to two possibilities. One, it can be triggered by the slow increase of the external magnetic field, or two, the flipping of adjacent spins will make it energy advantageous for the given spin to flip. Here, we run the simulation on a 200 by 200 grid at a low disorder of 0.7. This low disorder means that there are few irregularities, so one spin can easily trigger a massive avalanche, as you can see. Increasing the disorder to 0.8, we still find large avalanches occurring, but one does not encompass the entire domain. At the critical disorder of 0.9, interesting things begin to happen. We see all sizes of avalanches from the tiny isolated ones all the way to the spanning avalanches, or infinite avalanches, that cover the entire region. Increasing the disorder to above 0.9, we begin to find a greater number of isolated smaller avalanches. This occurs because increased disorder prevents any unification of domains that we saw in the lower disorder cases. Rather than adjacent spins triggering other spins to turn, the applied field is now required to flip most spins. While you could probably walk these avalanches all day, it is also fun to plot the applied magnetic field with respect to the magnetization, increasing the external field until all the spins are aligned one way and then decreasing the external field back, we get a characteristic hysteresis loop seen here. It can be seen that the magnetization lags behind the applied field. We can also plot multiple hysteresis loops of various disorders on the same plot. This graph shows the critical disorder corresponds to a critical applied field of about 1.35. Low disorders have sharp jumps, like in 0.6, whereas higher disorder plots are more gradual. We saw this in the simulations video also. In the 2D case, scaling and determining critical exponents has a few issues. However, I did find that when I plotted the probability of an avalanche size occurring versus the avalanche size, there was some data collapse. These four disorders resulted in a critical exponent of a negative 1.34, so there must be some universality going on here. Finally, zooming in on a hysteresis loop, we can notice that the magnetization change is not gradual. Rather, it is a series of small jumps as highlighted. These correspond to the avalanches. In the next part of this video, you will hear spins flipping, and the tiny jumps seen here are the cause of that phenomenon. Now, I'd like to demonstrate the Barkhausen noise effect in real life. We start with a solenoid, uh, which is wire wrapped around a hollow tube, and that is connected to an amplifier, which is wired to a speaker so that we can hear it. Um, this demonstration relies on the Faraday effect. So when we have a changing magnetic field uh, through a loop of wire, we induce a current, and that current will then be converted into an audio signal that the speaker will then uh, produce for us to hear. Well, before I start testing the materials, I'd like to establish a baseline of what it sounds like without any material inside the uh, solenoid. You don't hear anything. So the first material uh, is a copper rod, uh, which is not uh, magnetized by our magnet. And so we would expect that we wouldn't hear uh, anything. And that is, in fact, the case. We don't hear any static, is what we're kind of looking for, a statically sounded noise. A type of steel. And this one. Very faint, but we actually do hear a very slight uh, amount of uh, spin slipping in this type of metal. 
Now I'd like to look at uh, right iron. Got a few of these nails that are taped together with electric tape. Um, soft iron allows us to um, change as often used in as magnetic cores because they allow uh, their spins to flip um, very easily to uh, external magnetic fields. So let's see if you can hear any spins flipping here. It's quite faint. Uh, it would be better if we had uh, a nail that went through the entire solenoid so we could have more material. Um, but it is there. Now we're going to try the steel bolt. And I've put some foam on, foam on the end so that it doesn't knock around inside the solenoid uh, when the magnet gets close. This one is much louder than the right iron case. This one is also an interesting case because if I keep the magnet in one orientation and I bring it close to the steel bolt, we can hear the spins flip, but then when I do it again, it becomes more and more faint. So what happens is that the spins align with the magnetic field, and then when I take the external field away, they remain in that orientation and they don't flip back. But if I change the field to a new orientation, the spins now align to that new field. I found the best results with a very common household item, which is a coat hanger that I've bent into a, a rod so that it can be uh, fit into the solenoid. Uh, it's a soft iron, and so it's very susceptible to aligning with, so the spins are very susceptible to aligning with the external magnetic field, as I will show now.